Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. In Genesis 1.27 it says we are made in the image of God. But in reality, men are made in the image of God and women are made in the image of men. Because it says in Genesis 2 verses 21 to 23, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Now, yes, even though we were created in the image of God, it is true that we are still vile and wretched, because the sinful flesh we inhabit is susceptible to sin. It says in Philippians 3.21, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And in Romans 7.24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? There are those who believe they can improve upon the Lord's design by way of makeup or other vain beauty enhancements. But this is a blasphemous mindset, as it says that we can do better than God himself. So ask yourself, where has your standard of beauty come from? Why do various societies around the world consider different physical attributes beautiful? Why is there no consistency amongst humanity? Well, the answer is because the standards by which we measure beauty are subjective, and we are taught these standards by TV, movies, magazines, and the internet. Take things like foot binding in China, where we actually deformed women for some standard of beauty, or neck stretching as examples of horrific ways of achieving some subjective view of what beauty actually means. But what does God say beauty is? What is his standard for measuring beauty? In 1 Samuel 16 verses 6 and 7 it says, And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The Lord does not see us like we see ourselves. We can only see superficial and vain beauty, but he sees our hearts. Prophecy even said that when Jesus would come the first time, he would be an average-looking man. In Isaiah 53, 2, it says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus intentionally came to visit us the first time with average looks because he wanted people to be attracted to the truth of his words, and he did not want people to be attracted to him based on his good looks. Job 40 verse 10 Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. And Psalm 27 4 One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. And so we see that the Lord himself is beauty. And even further, Isaiah 28.5, In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory, and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people. And Isaiah 33.17, Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. So again, the Lord is beauty. First Chronicles 16.29 Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 29.2 Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And in Psalm 96.9 O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. And in 1 Thessalonians 4, 7. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. And so what we learn from these verses is that holiness is beauty. Psalm 50, verse 2. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. So God's people, represented by Zion, are beautiful.
Psalm 149, verse 4. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. And Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. So beauty is being saved, and beauty is the bringing of the good news of peace and salvation to the world. Romans 10.15 And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. So, the righteous walk of the faithful is beautiful. Hosea 14 verses 1-6 through 6. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words, and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, Take away all iniquity, and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. Asher shall not save us. We shall, we shall not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands, Ye are our gods. For in thee the fatherless find mercy. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily, and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread, and his beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell as Lebanon. So beauty is given to us by the Lord. The Lord himself makes us beautiful. Please understand that superficial beauty is not beauty. In Ezekiel 28:17 it says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. In case you are unaware, this is one of the chapters in the Bible where it's speaking directly about Satan himself. Satan was the first to be prideful and boastful of his physical appearance. He was the first to obsess over his good looks. And that's why you see that same spirit running through mankind in those who are very vain about their looks. Psalm 49.14 Like sheep they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. So, as we all know, all physical beauty fades away. It does not last forever. Proverbs 31.30 Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So beauty is vain, but fearing the Lord is true beauty. Isaiah 13.19 And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So pride and beauty combine to make destruction. A beautiful face does not mean a godly heart. Matthew twenty three twenty seven, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. So outward beauty is ugliness, if the person does not love God. 1 Peter 3, verses 1 through 5. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God great, of great price." For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Now, since the people of God are called the bride of Christ, he is our spiritual spouse, we then read the following. In 2 Corinthians 11.2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And Revelation 21.2, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Then, 1 Peter 3, 1-5 can apply to us. 
and shows what our spiritual husband, Jesus Christ, considers to be beautiful. In conclusion, don't allow the world to dictate what beauty is, and don't allow the superficial and vain standards of the world tear you apart. Concentrate on the Lord, who sees the beauty of a faithful and obedient heart, rather than the vain, outward, and fading looks that we concentrate on. I hope and pray that you are blessed by everything you heard here today. God bless.